Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. Today we've got another video in our Dry Dock series, and uh, we're super excited. We just passed the 200,000 subscriber mark, and I suspect that all of the press that we've been getting about Dry Dock is one of the things that's driving new people to our channel. Uh, so if you're one of those new folks, thanks for joining us. Let us know in the comment section down below how you found us. Did the algorithm gods just put us in front of you, or uh, did you come searching for us because you heard about Dry Dock or, or something else? Let, let us know in the comment section down below. So for today's video, because we've got all these new followers, it's going to be a question that many of you longtime listeners already know the answer to and can probably hear me saying in my sleep. But because we've got so many new followers, uh, we've gotten this question again, so here's the answer again. The, the question we've been getting is, we heard Battleship New Jersey is moving next year to Dry Dock. Is she going to go under her own power? Uh, and I can hear you guys out there at home shouting, no! Um, and, and that's the short answer. No, the ship is not going to go to Dry Dock under her own power. Uh, first off, the last time Battleship New Jersey sailed under her own power was sometime in 1990, before she went into dry dock to start the decommissioning process. Which means that for the last several months of her commission service into 1991, she did not sail under her own power. She would have been towed by tugboat from Long Beach where she was decommissioned and where she did her inactivation yard period up to Bremerton. And then she was towed by tugboat from Bremerton through the Panama Canal all the way up to the Philadelphia Navy Yard in the year 2000 to be turned into a museum ship here in Camden. She was then moved by tugs from Philadelphia to Camden. So uh, it has been over 30 years since the ship has sailed under her own power, which includes several months where the ship was an active commissioned vessel in the United States Navy with a crew assigned to her, and she could not move under her own power. Part of that is because the Navy intends for the ship to still be usable if they ever need her back. So we have a uh, several page long contract with the Navy that says that we own the ship. However, if there's ever a national emergency or if we're not doing a good job of taking care of the ship to Navy standards, they can come and take her back. Uh, likewise, if we ever uh, cease to exist as an organization and we need to uh, transfer the ship, we can't just make an agreement with Independent Seaport Museum across the river, home of uh, Olympia and Bakuna. Uh, we, we couldn't just do a handshake agreement with them and say, come over and take the ship whenever the keys are still there. Um, the ship reverts to the Navy and then the Navy chooses uh, how they're going to dispose of the ship again. If they choose to turn her into a museum, then they would put her out for open applications and other organizations would apply to get her. So uh, the, the short answer is no, we're not moving the ship under our own power to dry dock because our Navy contract doesn't allow us to. So why doesn't the Navy contract allow us to and could the Navy get the ship running again if they wanted to? Uh, and, and the short answer to that is yes, the Navy could. My estimate is it will take about a year of work and about $2 billion to reactivate New Jersey or any of the other Iowa-class battleships. These ships were all decommissioned in the 90s with the intention that they could be reactivated if needed again. And we see it time and time again in our decommissioning paperwork um, that they are putting things away such that they can be used again. Uh, and, and that specifically includes the engines. If the radar systems don't work, who cares? They're already obsolete. Replace them with a new one. If the five inch guns don't work, obsolete. Replace them. If the engines don't work, you don't have a battleship anymore. You can't replace this engine. Here in the armored part of the ship, the engine rooms are in the citadel. The bottom of the ship is three layers thick. The sides of the ship are five layers thick, including an armored belt 12 inches thick. And there are three armored decks overhead including one that's six inches thick. We can't just cut a hole in the side of the ship, 
like they've done on some ships to put in a new engine or cut a hole through the deck of the ship uh, like when you're changing the reactor in an aircraft carrier. They don't have the sort of armor to go through and then replace to get at these engines. So these engines are the beating heart of these ships. If they can no longer function, the ship can no longer be used. So when these ships were decommissioned, they were intentionally preserved in a way that they could be used again in the future. Uh, essentially, they're, they're putting preservative oils on all of the moving parts. They're, they're keeping the temperature at a certain level so the humidity, condensation, things like that aren't getting in there and corroding the steel so that the, the steel isn't fusing together, uh, so that the turbine blades aren't warping, bending, being damaged, uh, that the turbine shaft isn't damaging, the gears are, are still fine. So the Navy put all of this work into preserving these engines. The second we start to remove that preservative grease, the engines start to deteriorate. We can reverse that by having a trained crew who service these constantly. These were constantly, constantly, constantly getting work in service. And the ship's engineering department was several hundred sailors. During World War II, it was over 800 sailors in the engineering divisions. So uh, even if we get a fraction of that, can we find 100 sailors? Uh, can we find 50 sailors who are able to operate these so that we can get one or two of the engines running again so we can get the ship to dry dock? Uh, potentially we could. It's gonna cost a heck of a lot more money than uh, getting a tugboat, but we could. But then the problem is we unencase the engine, we get it working again, we use it, and those guys age out. Then their experience goes with them. So at a certain point, one generation from now, two generations from now, three generations from now, people don't exist who still know how to use these engines. We are preserving this ship for as long as humanly possible. That's the whole point of going into dry dock, to get several more decades of life out of the hull of this ship. So causing a chain of events to start that's going to lead to these not being preserved for the long term makes no sense. But wait, that's not the only problem. When the battleship was last in dry dock, the whole reason why she goes into dry dock for inactivation was to blank over all of the through hull openings. These engines require salt water to be sucked into the evaporators to be turned into the boiler feed water that's going to be boiled and sent into them. They require uh, salt water to be sucked up into the condensers through these huge 36 inch valves to cool that steam that's gone through the turbines back down so they can go back into the boilers. Every single one of those 165 through hull openings in the bottom of the ship has a metal plate over it, so we cannot get that water on board. If the Navy was going to get this ship running again, they would come with a tugboat, they would take it into dry dock, they would cut those openings, and then they would run the engines. So even if we decided, yeah, we've got more money than God and we're going to get these engines working again, we would still have to use a tugboat to take the ship to dry dock to remove uh, those blanks, to reverse that process to get the engines to the point where they can function again. And uh, simply put, we do not yet have enough money to do this dry docking, much less enough to reactivate the ship, find those really, really experienced technical experts, and then pay them to maintain it. And so again, the long, or again, the uh, short version of this answer is we are tugging the ship to dry dock. We are not going to uh, be able to go under our own power. We're not gonna do any work in dry dock to get the ship able to sail under her own power. Our contract does not allow us to. We could not afford to do it, and it would be detrimental to the long-term preservation of the ship. It's worth pointing out at this point in the video that uh, 
While the different Iowa-class battleships have slightly different contracts because they were turned into museums at different time periods, the Navy did keep Wisconsin and Iowa in mothballs longer than New Jersey and Missouri. So the, the contracts are just a little bit different, but none of our ships are owned by the Navy anymore. None of us are still held in mothballs to be reactivated, and none of our contracts allow the museums to reactivate them. So basically anything I've said about New Jersey in this video more than likely applies to the other three Iowas as well. And, and so it's worth pointing out that back in 2009, when Missouri went into dry dock, she was towed into dry dock. They left all of her sea chests blanked over and then they towed her back to her berth. So we're, we're doing the exact same thing they did. And I imagine that uh, if and when Iowa, Wisconsin do something similar, when we do this again in 30 years, when Missouri does this again, that it's going to be the exact same. So, do you guys have any questions about the dry docking process? Let us know in the comment section down below. We'd love to answer them in a future video. Every Wednesday at 7 Eastern Standard, we release a new video answering questions about the dry docking process. Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State also from a number of other businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support. There's a link in the description below if you'd like to donate to the museum and our dry docking progress. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find out about the ship and the museum. Thanks for watching.